ओके हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक आई होप यू हैव सीन माय फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन दिस चैप्टर इंट्रोडक्शन टू इकोनॉमिक्स वेयर सम बेसिक कंसेप्ट्स वी हैव डिस्कस सम बेसिक कंसेप्ट्स वी हैव गॉन थ्रू सम कंसेप्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एक्चुअली इकोनॉमिक्स मीन एंड व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स आई कंटिन्यू इन दिस सेकेंड वीडियो टू फॉर द फर्दर टॉपिक्स बट बिफोर वी गो फॉर द फर्दर टॉपिक्स Uh, let us revise what are the things we have uh, uh, seen in the first video and uh, okay so i'll begin with this you can see the first in this uh, slide this is the first slide that we have seen where uh, i asked a question to you uh, to find out that what are the activities that uh, you do in a day and what are the activities your parents do and then the we have gone through a one of a very important topic here to understand the difference between economic activity and non economic activity as i told economic activity is a are those activity which is related to money against which money is earned whereas non economic activities are those uh, for which no money is earned but these type of activities are done uh, for self satisfaction or for pleasure some more examples we have seen i hope you remember uh, this this was the third slide that we uh, i have shown you in my first video where some examples of economic activity whereas some examples of non economic activity we have discussed like attending marriage ceremony and uh, religious activity charitable activity so these all comes under non economic activity whereas production consumption distribution comes under economic activity okay so uh, this was a uh, another slide that i have shown uh, and uh, here i have asked you to uh, this was your home task where i asked you to find out which one um, uh, which one of these are economic activity and uh, which one of these are non economic activity okay uh, okay let us uh, quickly go through this was the another slide that we have seen where i was trying to explain you the meaning of the word economics and from where does the word economics has derived one important question that comes uh, in examination is that from where does the word economics has derived so it is derived from the greek word oikonomos which means household management and the fourth definition you can see here uh, we have discussed two definitions so far and today we are going to discuss about scarcity definition and growth definition of economics uh after this we have seen uh, i have skipped this uh, uh we have seen this uh, slide where wealth definition that was given by adam smith we have gone through this definition uh then its features of wealth definitions and then criticism of the wealth definition similarly welfare definition uh, was given by alfred marshall we have also gone through this definition we have seen what are its and uh, features and what are its criticism uh, in criticism we have discussed that uh, alfred marshall uh, has forgot to talk about uh, non material good he has not talked about the service uh, of a teacher doctor that also increase the human welfare uh the third point okay uh for today lesson what is important for us to understand the third criticism that is put forward against the alfred marshall definition if you look in, into the third criticism then it is told that alfred marshall definition does not show any relation between ends and scare mean this is actually uh, we will go into the next uh, topic to find out uh, that what is this criticism is okay so let us uh, continue from here you can see in this slide the third definition of economics is given by professor lionel robin and this definition of economics is known as scarcity definition of economics so let me first read the definition so that we can understand uh, and we can uh, go through the definition in a better way uh look at the second point if you go through the second point then you will find that it is written that economics is a science which study human behavior as a relation between ends and scares mean which have alternative uses there are many many important keywords that is uh, there in this definitions and we will go through each and every keyword separately so let me just point out the important keywords you can see here uh, according to Lionel Robin he is telling that economics is that science that study human behavior so this is the first keyword that we are getting in this definition that is human behavior second he is telling that economics is a science that study the relation between 
ends and scares me i hope you remember i told the word end here does not does not mean the, the does not mean the in general uh, the word end here means unlimited human wants i told you what is uh, uh, human wants and why we say that the human wants are unlimited so okay we will come to this point uh, afterward again in uh, much detail uh, so this is the second important keywords which we find here that is the relation between ends and scares mean and the third important keyword in this definition is alternative uses so uh, he is also saying that the resources that is available on the earth which fulfill the need of the people uh, have alternative uses it can be put to several use so we'll come come one by one we'll go through each and every keyword and we'll try to understand the definition first and then we'll go for some more criticism of this definition okay so let us uh, go through the features first you can see in this slide uh, the three features i have pointed out and we have two more features of this definition in the next slide. We'll go through this, but let us first uh, go through this slide to understand the important features of uh, Robinson definition of economics. The first important feature, uh, keyword is unlimited one. Robinson in his definition is talking about unlimited human one. That is of course a very common behavior of human being. Human, human beings or individual have unlimited want. We have unlimited wants. Our uh, want never satisfy. And this is the reason that why economy is running and why uh, day by day uh, the uh, innovations are going on and the goods and the new type of good is produced because it is demanded in the uh, economy. Uh, if I uh, read this point and then uh, if I explain, I hope it will be much better for all of us. The point say, the word end here implies that human wants are unlimited. We possibly cannot satisfy them all. If one is satisfied, other crops up. Therefore, man is forced to select most urgent want first and less urgent want uh, later on. So basically, what, what is the point? The point is, if I, uh, explain, if I explain this with the help of an example, I hope it will be uh, good for all of us. See, in, throughout the life, there are many things that we want. And when we fulfill one of our want, the another desire of us uh, comes comes up. So that is that is why we say that the human wants are unlimited. If one is satisfied, there is a demand for something else. So, like for example, when a uh, a person uh, want to have, uh, there are various things that we want to have in our life. If I am talking about economic goods, then uh, we in order to enjoy a luxurious life, we demand for a good house, we demand for a car, we demand for uh, many many other uh, luxurious commodities. Uh, during the summer, we demand uh, we desire to have uh, air condition so that we can live comfortably. Uh, for keeping the foods uh, stored in a proper way, we demand for refrigerator. So there are lot of lot of things that we keep on demanding uh, throughout our life, and that is the reason that why uh, it is told that the human wants are unlimited. Means it is never ending. So from the birth till death, the people keep on demanding uh, one commodity to our, an, another commodity. Not only this, uh, uh, sometimes it is also told that the human wants are recurring in nature. The word recurring here implies that we keep on uh, means the same type of demand uh, keep on uh, um, occurring again and again like for example if i give you one example then i hope you it will uh, you can understand what is what does the word recurring implies here like for example our desire or demand for food is recurring in nature right we when we feel hungry in the morning we have our breakfast after some time again we uh, desire for food uh, uh, desire for food and we have our lunch then again dinner so this breakfast lunch and dinner it keeps on going in a cycle so every day this repeat so that is the, this is the reason that why we say that human wants are recurring in nature so it keep on uh, occurring again and again so that this is the first uh, important uh, point that is uh, given by Robinson in his definition of economics uh, saying that uh, economics is a study of human behavior and in that behavior the first behavior that we come to know about human being is that human wants are unlimited okay so coming on to the next uh, point that uh, that second feature uh, of scarcity definition you can see here at the same time Robinson is also telling that human wants are unlimited and the, the resource 
which fulfill these wants uh, are scarce in nature any any want that we uh, anything that we want to have any economic good that we want to have is not abundant in nature and this is the reason that why these good have some market price it is because because of the scarcity so because of the scarcity the goods possess uh, market price so that is that is what we are talking uh, talking here in this point we are telling that uh, the resource uh, is very scarce in nature and uh, that resource is not sufficient enough to fulfill all our demand and therefore we have to make a list of the urgency and the less urgent want you can look here in the first point it is told that we have to select the most urgent want first and the less uh, less urgent want later on and that is the reason suppose if i give you one example uh, um, you can look here also first before i give you the example that money income required for satisfaction of want of an individual is limited even money uh, that we possess is not sufficient enough to fulfill all our desire or all our want and that is why we say that the resources are scarce in nature uh, if, and uh, if we if we talk about some natural resource then we know from uh, the very beginning that these natural resources are not uh, abundant in nature and this is the reason that why there is a crisis of these resources and there are many problems in the economy because of the uh, limited quantity of uh, availability of these resources like for example uh, we can talk about about coal uh, coal is a very important natural resource but it is limited in nature it is not sufficient and this is the reason that uh, uh, why we are uh, thinking about some alternative sources of energy so that uh, we can replace uh, coal we can save some uh, coal for the future generation so this is the reason that uh, uh, we are uh, we are telling that scarcity of resource is the second important phenomenon that we see in the economy and uh, mr robinson has pointed out uh, this uh, point in his definition of economics right okay and uh, uh, if you look here i can give you one example as i was telling that i'll give you one example to make you understand that we have to put the most urgent want first and the less urgent want later on okay let us have one example suppose uh, tomorrow you have your exam and your parents give give you uh, 10 rupees to buy a pen the and at the same time you are feeling very hungry the point is that where is your preference whether you are going to use that 10 rupees to have a pen or you are going to use that 10 rupees to have a egg roll or anything that you like to eat so that shows your urgency uh, urgency that whether whether you are going to uh, whether your your preference is more towards uh, pen so that tomorrow you can comfortably give the examination or your preference is towards that egg roll or the food that you like to eat uh, to fulfill your hungerness so that is what actually um, the uh, uh, you have to decide so your uh, preference will decide that what is what is urgent for you and what is less urgent for you okay so moving on further uh, to the third feature of uh, scarcity definition you can look here according to the scarcity definition uh, the third important point which Robinson has mentioned in its uh, uh, definition I will go through that uh, uh, this you can see here uh, in this definition he is telling that the resources are scarce and at the same time these resources have alternative use what does it mean it simply mean that the resource which is available in the economy can be put to several use and therefore we have to think that what is that what that is the uh, means what is the use in which i have to put the resource first for example suppose let us take one example you can look here example i have taken an example where i have taken example of a coal and we are uh, we are uh, giving the examples and i am giving you the examples like this that coal can be put to several uses we know this it can be used in a uh, furnace uh, in a factory it can be used for running uh, trains uh, in early days uh, trains used to run with the help of a, by burning a coal it can be coal can be used for generating electricity and at the same time coal can be used for uh, cooking purpose but the point is uh, that where to use once the coal is used in a factory it cannot be used for these three uh, purpose similarly if we use the coal for cooking purpose we cannot use the coal for generating electricity and uh, uh, in, and also in a factory so therefore it is up to us that how to use the resource because resource one used 
for one particular work cannot be used for uh, another another work so that is what actually mr robinson is talking about he is telling that res uh, resources are scarce and at the same time uh, the resources have alternative use so it is uh, us who decide where to use the resource so that the welfare of the human being can be increased so these are the three important uh, features of scarcity definition we have two more uh, important features and i'll show you this in my next slide you can see here uh, these are the two imp uh, two more uh, features where it is told efficient use of scarce resource just now i told uh, that the resources are scarce and at the same time they have alternative use so this uh, in uh, due to this two point we can say that since the resources are scarce and they have alternative use so it is uh, on the basis of our priority that how i am going to use the resource you can look here at the point wants are unlimited so wants are rank in order of priority so what is my priority what what are the things that i want first and then i'm going to satisfy the next uh, desire of mine so it is the so where should i use the resource whether i should use the resource to um, i mean how how i should use the resource i should use the resource in the most efficient manner for the satisfaction of my want so that is what we are talking about which mr robinson is also telling mr robinson is telling that resources should be used efficiently to fulfill all our want like uh, if I give you one example, uh, I hope uh, then this point will uh, much more uh, clear to all of us. Uh, like for example, like a, a take us a, let, let us take a real life example. Human beings are also a kind of a resource because we as a teacher, we are also a resource to you because we are fulfilling your desire for uh, knowledge. So whenever we, when you uh, desire for knowledge, we as a teacher what, that with our knowledge, we fulfill your uh, desire for knowledge. So I teach economics and suppose, for example, if I have given a class of uh, biology, then what we find that it is very difficult for me to teach bi uh, biology uh, than, the, than economics because I have been uh, mastered in uh, economics, not in biology. So my uh, specialization is economics, not biology. So therefore, if I being used uh, for taking classes of biology, then uh, the class will not be so efficient or something like this. So therefore, we say that uh, resources should be used in a most efficient manner. Right. And finally, coming on to the last point, uh, that is the last feature of uh, uh, Robinson definition. You can see here it is written science of choice. Let me read this point so that we can understand the point in a much better way. Uh, since wants are unlimited and means uh, to satisfy it is scarce, therefore we have to select the most urgent want first and the less urgent one uh, later on. Therefore, the economics also describe as a science of choice. So this is what we have uh, talked so far. I'm uh, again and again I'm telling this that is the fourth important point in the Robinson definition is that uh, we have to first uh, make a list of the urgent want and uh, these resources should be used to uh, fulfill the urgent want first and then if the resources are left we can go for the less urgent want also so that is what and uh, on this we are saying that this uh, point this definition is nothing but it has been pointed out um, it has been told that uh, economics is also a science of choice where we where we make a choice so these are the uh, features that is put forward uh, in the robinson definition you can again see let me just uh, show you the slides uh, it is told that uh, first economics is a science that study human behavior so this is the first important keyword we have discussed in human behavior i told that unlimited human want is being discussed then uh, there is a relation between ends and scarce mean only ends means unlimited human want and scarce means that resources are not uh, available in abundance and so there is a economic problem that arises so there are three economic problem that we will discuss uh, afterward also in some more uh, in the next chapter where we will see that all the economies of the world uh, faces three uh, major problem and that problem is known as central problems of economy what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce so the this uh, question arises only because we find that the resources are scarce in nature and the third important keyword that we have seen in the 
Robinson definition is resources have alternative use and therefore we are saying that economics is a science of choice because uh, we have to choose according to our priority. So these are the uh, important things, uh, important features that we have gone through. But of course, as we know that uh, none of the definition is free from criticism. So for something or other, uh, there are some criticism put forward by uh, some more economists uh, against uh, these definitions. So let us find out what are the criticism of Robinson definition. You can look here. This are the criticism I have uh, in the next slide. We have two more criticism. So, but let us first understand the criticism that is put forward uh, against the Robinson definition that is also called scarcity definition of economics. Okay, let us look the first point. If you look in, look to the first point, you will find it is written that Robinson definition of economics has neglected economic growth and uh, definition. The definition consider resources as given and focused on its allocation. However, it neglected its growth and development over time and may uh, become more efficient. So there are two important uh, point in this uh, de in this uh, definition that is put forward against the Robinson definition. Robinson in his definition of economics is telling that there is a scarcity of resource and resources are limited. But if we look into the nature or if we look into the way the economy is growing, then you will find that it's not that the resources are limited. If we permit time or if we give time to the resource, the resource also regenerate resources regenerate right so that is what the point is suppose for example we can talk about wood we know that we take uh, we obtain wood from tree and uh, the point is that if we give sufficient time the tree will grow up and again we can use the wood from that tree so that is what the point is that uh, mr robinson has neglected he has not talked about that whether the resources he he only told that resources are limited he has not told anything about in his definition that resources can regenerate that is growth of the resources is possible over time if we give them a time and the second important thing which uh, mr robinson is not talking in his definition that is a uh, another criticism of a uh, robinson definition that ris, uh, ris, he, here it is told may become more efficient so with the uh, time what we see that the resource become more efficient in their work and if, since efficiency increases, the production automatically increases. So efficiency, the word efficiency or the efficiency of resource is also missing in the definition of uh, Robinson definition of economics. So this is one of the criticism that is put forward. Let us go for the second criticism that we how why we criticize the Robinson definition. It is told that Robinson definition of economics is contradictory in nature. Why we are saying contradictory? Because on one ground, Robinson is telling in his definition of economics that economics is a neutral science. You can see here, I am pointing out here uh, on the screen that neutral. Neutral means that economics has nothing or economists have nothing to do with good or bad ends. Good or bad end means uh, the economics has nothing to uh, go through or nothing to do with the good wants and the bad wants good want may be that is the commodities that increase our welfare and bad want may be say suppose production of cigarette production of alcohol this these are the goods which do not uh, generally uh, 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 increase our welfare but still these are the goods that is produced in the economy and so we are saying that economics is ne neutral towards good and bad but on the other end uh, Robinson is again telling that we have to make choice. We have to make cho choice how to use the resource so that our urgent want is fulfilled first and the less urgent want is fulfilled later on. So therefore, he is again saying that economics is a science of choice. You can see I am pointing out on this uh, slide that economics is a science of choice. So basically, uh, he is contradicting uh, in his definition by t one time telling that economics is a neutral, nothing to do with good and bad. But at the same time, he is telling that economics is a science of choice. So science of choice means uh, that we have to, uh, therefore, we have to put a priority of a priority that uh, which, which we, what are the wants that I want to fulfill 
first and what are the wants I want to fulfill uh, later on. So therefore, uh, this definition of Robinson is little bit contradictory with uh, himself. Okay, coming on to the third uh, criticism, you can look here, that is the third criticism of the scarcity definition is put forward and uh, it is being uh, told that this definition is too wide. Why we are saying that the definition is too wide? Uh, I'll show you the definition first. If you see the definition, I hope you can now uh, understand that why we are saying that this definition is too wide because in his definition, he is telling that economics is a science which study human behavior. So he is telling that human human behavior means uh, I am considering all types of human in an economy, all types. So he is not particularly mentioning that which type of human being we are talking about. So this is what actually, so this is the slide. So see, I will read this point. According to him, economics is the study of all human activity. So social as well as non-social. So inclusion of non-social being like sent smuggler and many other person like this uh, is really very difficult. So we cannot study the uh, human activity of all human beings in the economy because there are some uh, non-social human beings that is the uh, person those who are involved in the illegal activity. So study their behavior economically is really very difficult. So this is a criticism that is we cannot study the uh, human behavior of uh, non-social human beings. So this is the third criticism which is put forward against the scarcity definition of economics. So there are two more uh, criticism. Let us quickly go through this. Uh, that is called problem of abundance. Problem of abundance means uh, simply uh, because Robinson is again and again telling that due to the scarcity of resource, all the central problems of the economy arises. That what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce, right? <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, in this point, I'll tell you problem of abundance here implies that all the economic problems like what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce does not always arise because of the scarcity. Sometimes the problem also arise due to the abundance of the commodity that is being produced. So that is what the point is. I will not go for uh, much detail, uh, detail in this point. Uh, we will have this. Dis uh, we'll have the discussion on this point afterward also. So let us le just let me uh, conclude here that um, Robinson definition is criticized by saying that uh, problems does not arise because of scarcity only. Problems arises because of abundance also. And finally, we will come to the last criticism that is put forward against the Robinson definition, and it is told that Robinson definition is not applicable to reach country. Why we are saying the reach country? You can look here the point. The problem of scarcity and their mere allocation may not be relevant to reach country. Economic problem uh, problem before reach country is to maintain their high level of consumption. So what is this point? The point simply say that uh, mm, scarcity if we are talking about scarcity so these rich country have lot of lot of resource with them or even if they do not have the resource they can import the resource because of the high level of the high level of their economic uh, position in the world so they uh, the problem is not about the scarcity for them the what is the problem the problem is to maintain the high level of consumption so their consumption level or their status uh, their consumption status is so high so therefore they do not think about the basic uh, things what they think about or what they um, focus on that how they can maintain their present level of consumption without reducing it. So that is what actually we can say uh, put uh, one point that is put forward by the uh, writer that uh, it is the, this definition of economics is not applicable to rich country. It is more applicable to uh, poor country or underdeveloped or developing country. So that is what the uh, five, crit uh, five criticism that I put forward against the scarcity definition. We will move on to the last topic in this chapter. You can look here that is the that is known as growth definition. So this is the final uh, definition of economics and uh, this was given by Professor Samuelson. Uh, this is a cartoon picture of uh, Miss Professor Samuelson and you can look here the definition run like this where we say that economics is the study of how men and society with or without the use of money employ the scarce productive resource which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in future among various people and group of society. 
right so this is quite a big definition of economics but uh, this definition of economics has been uh, supported by many economists and it covers almost uh, um, uh, all type uh, all type of uh, necessity that was that is needed that was needed in the uh, needed to define what actually economics is so you can look here there are some uh, point that we have already discussed i'll point it out so it is told that economics is the study how men and society so we are talking about uh, human behavior and at the same time we are talking about the entire society how they are using uh, the the resource we, again we are talking about the scarce productive resource that is the resources are scarce and how the people and the society are using this resource that have alternative uses i hope we have also gone through this point called alternative uses in the robinson definition so that society can produce commodities uh, over time over time means that is for the present and also for the future so mr robinson is also talking about sustainable development or i may say that is the production in the present and the fu future time so that the people can consume now and in future so this is what actually the def uh, most appropriate definition of economics so far and accepted by uh, economists worldwide so let us uh, just quickly go through some criticism this is the last slide where you find that this growth definition has uh, uh, four uh, four uh, sorry uh, the features that is four features here efficient allocation of resource he is talking about that we should use the resource in a most appropriate manner so that uh, resources can be used to fulfill maximum want so this is uh, what pointed out in his definition to use the resource in the most efficient manner similarly he is also talking about the growth which was missing in the robinson definition he is telling that the resources that is uh, there on the earth to fulfill this uh, human want is not is, is of course it is a scarce in nature but if we permit time if we give them time then these resources can grow over time uh, the third important uh, point is solution to the economic problem. So economic, economics is not only concerned with the identification of economic problem, but it also suggests ways and means to solve them. So this is again one very important uh, feature, uh, feature that is put forward for the growth definition. He is telling that economics is a subject where we do not just study the problem, but as an economist, we give solution to the problem. So that is what actually the economics. So economics is not only identifying of the problem, identifying what is the problem in the economy, but uh, suggesting some solution to that problem. So that is what also mentioned in his uh, uh, definition of economics. And finally, if we go for the last point, you can see that we say that this definition is dynamic dynamic in the sense because uh, mr uh, samuelson is bringing time into consideration as i told sorry uh, as i told here that uh, uh, see uh, if you look into the definition of uh, professor samuelson then you are going to find that he is telling to produce various commodity over time so that is present and also for the future so since we are bringing time into consideration or he is bringing time into consideration in his definition and therefore we are saying that it is dynamic because that it take times into consideration so we have a two concept like static and dynamic static is something that uh, do not involve time whereas dynamic is something that involve time so his definition is also uh, credited with uh, saying that uh, the, his definition is dynamic in the sense that he is talking about production of good in the present time and also in the future future time so that is what uh, so let us quickly go uh, go and find out what are the things we have done i'll take only two minutes to uh, just see that uh, what are the things we have done we started from here we have seen a uh, difference between economic and non-economic activity a very important question what is the difference between economic activity and non-economic activity then some examples of economic activity and non-economic activity from uh, in this slide the question may be like this from where does the word uh, economic has derived then uh, the wealth definition we have seen the wealth definition its features and criticism similarly welfare definition that was given by alfred marcel its features and again its uh, criticism uh, robinson definition also known as scarcity definition it's uh, the definition that is given by robinson and its features there are five features uh, you can see on the screen and then we have seen uh, its criticism also that is the criticism of scarcity definitions again there are five criticism and finally we have seen what is the growth definition that is put forward by robinson and as i told you that this is the most widely accepted definition of economics so you remember the question may come that uh, which one uh, which one is the most widely accepted definition of economics and give the most widely accepted definition of economics and finally the features of growth definition so hope you are going to uh, hope you have liked this video 
video and uh, uh, we will continue further with the next chapter uh, in uh, some of the videos that is going to come. So thank you all.